Hello world, how's it going? LRBAquatics.com bringing it to you live again. Today I'm going to show you guys how I actually go about doing my shipping. As you can see here, I got a bunch of boxes pre-made, all that. And just kind of show you guys how I do it, my method. My method is a little unorthodox compared to a lot of other people's. Because mine kind of organically happen by recycling and reusing stuff. Like back in the day, like my work used to get all this foam stuff that you see in the boxes. Hello all in the chat. See there's quite a few cool people in here. Oh yeah. But uh, yeah, let's get on, get started with this, and I'll show you guys how I do this. Now when I go catching my fish and shrimp, I use this. Which this is just a bunch of deli cups. And I can get at least... 12 different orders or batches and then I just refill those up with uh, water again so that's pretty straightforward net them up this is a nice little handy tool to kind of get the right inlers I want since they just it's hard to catch single ones so I just dip it out with that here's all what I got going on here got some shrimp going on some fish going on and this is how I actually ship. So what this is, let's break this down. This is a USPS priority box. This is the standard size I use the most. Now of course, sometimes I have bigger shipments and everything, but I try to stick with this size. Which is, this is the box 4. And you can see the dimensions there and everything. And what I do is I reuse uh, plastic grocery bags, like my neighbors and everything hook me up, it's kind of sweet. Reuse all theirs. And so I put two of these in here as liners, just so the box doesn't end up getting wet if something bursts or something like that. And it ends up getting smashed. Because sometimes you have multiple bags in there, and if one busts, then the other one doesn't, which rarely, I rarely ever have anything bust. But still, better safe than to be sorry. And this is like foam insulation, like foam wrap insulation. And it's only like an eighth inch thick. And I, I prefer it over like the housing insulation. I'm not a big fan of that housing insulation because it gets all over the place. And it's just a mess. Same with peanuts. If those get wet, it's a mess. This keeps it nice and simple. And it works great, especially in the winter, because I'll show you guys how I do it with the heat pack and everything. So let me get you guys set up here, because I'm going to need both hands for this. Uh, hopefully I don't shut you guys off. Alright, here we go. So I got you guys set up. Now what I do, like, here I know this one's gone by itself. This is a Skittles Mega Mix. What I do, I just get it by the corner like that, wrap this one up. Kind of like a nice little, like say if it was a fragile mug or something. Pretty simple, lay it in there. And as far as what this is, this is actually three of these longer pieces, which these are two foot by 12 inches. And then perforated every 12 inches. But essentially what it is, I take one of these, that way, one of these this way, and then I double up one on the bottom for like extra padding. You'll see why. Just that way there's a little more between that and the box. And then when I actually shut this up, I end up folding it in. Kind of nice and neat like. So now it's got a lot of insulation on top of there. And obviously right now I can't see your guys' chat. But like always we'll have a little Q&A. Let you guys ask me some questions about this when I'm done with it. And just try to make sure the questions are about this if you got questions. We'll do the general Q&A like always on Fridays. And also some of you guys have been waiting on my Fire Reds and Blue Dreams. Those are out. I turned those back on today so some of you guys will probably be happy about that. Alright, now let's see here, down here 
is where I recycle and reuse more like people always get packages in Amazon stuff like that same with my neighbors family all that so I actually reuse all this stuff my favorite these are these work the best in my opinion but since I don't really have to worry about heat packs too much this week and if you guys didn't know I also lowered shipping price down to 10 bucks since you don't need heat packs anymore. Yeah, see, that's too much. Which is nice for everybody. And then like that, got it filled. I mean, it's tight, but not too tight. And then I just tape it up. Let's see, I think I got an empty label here so I can show you guys. And I'm getting ready to send all my shipments of the week out too. So you guys waiting on them and they're going out. But then I'd stick this here I usually fold it over the edge, but I make sure I tape the whole la label. That way, if it gets wet, they the ink won't run. Say if their scanner one gets wet, they can always still revert back to the original address on there and it not get wet. So that's a big key factor. I learned that a long, long time ago, like eight years ago when I first started shipping. I've been doing it like this for a long time. I first started shipping plants, then I moved on to shrimp and then I moved on to fish and this has worked well for me now let's go with the heat pack here move you guys over to the heat pack these are the heat packs I use these uni heats the 72 hour plus since I mostly ship priority And this is pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Probably not even going to need to use this, but oh well. I've got plenty of them. And then you would just take the red stripe, make sure the red stripe's down. Then I would just stick it on top of that like that. And let's see. These ones that I prefer, like these aerospaces, they work great. So I could just put it in like that. I try not to cover this all the way. I like some air in here. That way this stays warm. And what it does is it essentially heats all the foam up and everything. And it stays, it, it works really well. Alright. So that's how I actually box them and ship them. And as far as breather, I use the breather bags. Which you don't want to leave air in there. And another thing too, when you guys get breather bags, some of you guys may not know this, but you don't want to float these breather bags don't want to float them all right so let's move over let's do some Q&A so if you guys got questions now now's the time now's the time to ask your questions if you guys have them let me flip you guys over chat would there be more cost-effective people to ship with than USPS no UPS um, the reason why I used USPS is because they actually have heated warehouses and facilities like everything's air conditioned so that's why i don't use them and ups is more expensive and they don't have heated trucks and stuff will these orders be arriving on friday or saturday they will more likely be at landing on saturday i learned a little trick too is if you ship now if you ship early thursday morning like before it opens they'll like be three day or something like that but if you do it like right after they open on thursdays for some reason the system tries to push them all on to two day like all the time every time i do that they push it to like two day and usually lands on saturday which is part of the reason why i've kind of been lagging behind on my shipments is because if i can hit that two day mark it's just best for everything which I've actually had shrimp, 50 cherry shrimp one time, live in the mail for over five weeks before. Which is pretty crazy. I think that was in the fall time though. Like during the winter, it's a little riskier because they can spend time in a truck or on a plane. And let's see, as far as fish, let's see, the longest I had a fish live was a month in a bag in a box. It was an ornate rainbow fish. Um, let's see, who was that guy? So 
some guy in California. He's a Facebook friend. Can't think of his name off the bat here. But all right, anybody got any last questions? Why shouldn't you float the breather bag, Roma Aquatics? Uh, because the exchange of the oxygen. If you float the bag, the fish can't breathe in the bag, so you can actually suffocate the fish and shrimp. That's why you can't float it, because there's no oxygen exchange. That's how those breather bag works. Somehow the oxygen and can go through the bag. It's pretty wild. Off topic, but one of my CSR has a brown belly. All of a sudden, do you think that's from food or some other issues? Says Bookshelf Aquatics. A brown belly, maybe eggs. That's the only thing I can think of. What's the cost on 10 blues? They're six each, but they're probably going to go super fast. All right, any last questions? If not, I'm going to hop off here because i got to get back to these orders. i got a bunch of boxing to do and a bunch of water changes. i got to get on to the water changes. Like losing my babysitter for half the week and cutting half my uh, fish room time has really been tough. Super tough. I don't understand the science. I just know from rope that you can't float them. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of is many issues of people having floating them, and it's not. I mean, I've seen local fish stores float them too, where they still don't know. What shrimp do you have in stock right now? Cherries, fire reds, blue dreams, orange shrimp. Um, I think that's it for right now. And then the mixes. And the mixes. All right. All right. Well, I appreciate you all watching and joining. And uh, how many guppy fries Max Female can have at once? I'm not sure. But until tomorrow, hopefully I'll have another video for you guys. And until then, peace.